Good morning. This is the second part video of uh, our Tech 40 Pig Fly. This is what we're tying. We're going to tie it in red. So it's a 12 inch lightweight articulated with a rattle. Uh, people have been asking me about the weight of them when casting. And these are lightweight, they're tied sparse. But if you, on the first part, I showed you how to do the rear. So in this part, we're going to show you to finish the fly. Right, hooks we're going to use them for the front. I like a big, a decent, a decent hook, a decent gape. So we're using Sakuma 545s, 8 -0. It's a strong wire hook and it's got a decent shank length because we're only going to use the first third to tie the fly in. The rest is hollow apart from a rattle. So, again, thread on. A bit of, of zapper cap first. Whole shank length. This stops it from spinning. Once you start getting pressure on it. So we're going to use the whole shank this time. So a decent base on. Right to the back. Okay, a wire for joining it. People have people do use titanium, but I've found titanium after you've I had a couple of fish on it, it snaps. It's kink. So I've started you've been using this. This is Fox Carboflex in 40 pounds. So far I've had no problems with it. I've had half a dozen fish on a fly and it's still standing up fine. So I'm gonna stick with it for now. So the length we're wanting, we're wanting it a bit longer than the hook shank doubled. Because we will fold double this over. So pliers. So you've got about 200 mil, 210 millimeter there. So first things first, through the eye of the hook, the rear hook. And then line your points of your wire up. Okay. And I'm going to put a few beads on here. This holds the rear hook away from the front hook to stop it tail wrapping. Very important, you don't want your fly to tail wrap, it's just a pain. So, beads these are four mil plastic pedal, and then I've got funny different shape beads here for a bit of decoration, something a bit different. This one looks like a wee mini grenade. Something different. Uh, so we've got one pedal, two fancier things, and then another pedal. And that will be enough length to hold it away from your other hook to stop it rabbing. You don't want to push the beads right up to the eye. You want that loops about maybe six mil away from the bead, so it has a bit of movement and it won't jam up. So what you do with this, you put it on top of your hook, where you want it, catch it down, and then you've got to check it, make sure everything's sitting square, everything's sitting nice, perfect, and open wrap all the way to the front, okay. And then these two tags, put them through the eye of the hook. And then we're going to fold them back on ourselves. And that will not come out of there. Just make sure you fold them back so there's no slack. Keep them tight. On the other side. Keep them the same size as they were tied in for start. Right. Then open turn all the way back to the, the rear. 
and I always put one under my wire. It just kicks it up a wee bit. Just keep a wee bit extra, keeping it away. Okay, now, a bit extra security. A bit of zap a gap through the body. There's actually, people ask me about how strong this is, and I don't know the exact poundage rating, but I did see a YouTube video a few years ago, and it was a guy who actually had it on a machine and tested the strength, the pull strength of it. And it was unbelievable how, how powerful it was, or how strong it was. There's, you'll never get a pipe to pull this out. Or if you do, there's been a mistake in the time. Right, so bring your thread up to the line when you're pointing your hook. After you've done a good couple of wraps, that's it solid. We're going to put a rattle in. These are plastic rattles. I got them from Deer Creek. Uh, I was using glass ones for a while, but the glass ones can't break when you tie them in, so it's a bit of a pain, but these plastic ones have been good so far. So what you're wanting, you want it in line with the end of your thread and start bringing your thread over right in the middle of your bead or your rattle and bind it down, making sure you're square on top of the hook. Get a good few wraps in there. And then bring your thread into that groove at the front. And bind that down as well. And then bring your thread to about, I would say, 12, 15 mil from the eye of the hook. And that's it. That's your rattle in. It just it can't move. Just X by security. We're going to zap a gap it. Just make sure everything's locked up. Everything's nice. Bit of durability to the fly. Okay. So that's you. Even though we're using a big hook, a yellow hook, and they bought the shanks two inch long, there's no material on it apart from the first third. When we hollow tie this, that will all be covered up and you won't see it. So, again, start off bucktail. If you're choosing a bit of bucktail for this, because, you're, because we're going to be reverse tying it and we want it to flare, if you take, you look at your bucktail, if you take it from down the base, the base seems to be uh, a bit coarser, a bit wider, so there's more. It's it's a lot hollower than the top. Up here, it's, it's very fine. It's not very good for flaring. So choose your bit of buck, your bucktail, and we're wanting a decent amount. Probably 40, 50 strands in there. And the length I'm wanting, I'm wanting it just to go back to roughly the end of the beads. So. I'm going to trim a bit off here. So, when you tie it in, you want the end of the beads. And you want a bit so that will, when you reverse tie, you can catch it in. So, bring it around, reverse tie, roll it around. Trim your tags off because we don't need them. So there's extra weight that we don't need. Hmm. Tidy up. Do I have a varnish? This varnish I'm using, it's quite a runny varnish. So it soaks right into everything. It is actually Rimmel 60 seconds. Clear varnish, strong. It's quite runny, so it does soak in. Right, reverse tie, again, use your bit of tube, or use your fingers, whatever you find easier. 
hold everyone back, bring your thread straight along the shank underneath and then come up. And just making your dam again, not going over the top of your bucktail and just when you think you're right, the angle you're right, not quite 40 degrees, I'll get back about 30 maybe. So I'm happy with that. So my next bit, some white gloss and glint again. Again, gloss and glint. Taper it in your fingers. But this time, because you don't want it to go too far back, I'm going to do it 50 50. So 50% over the back, roll it around your hook shank and catch it in. And then split it and pull it underneath 50 50. Just hold everyone back, catch over it. So you're, ha you're happy with it. Tidy up. So again, I'm going to go for peril again. Peril, um, it's like a mile 50 50. Over the top. In it goes. Then your magnum head drawn flashaboo, three, four strands. Take it, fold it over. Fold it over so you get six. Cut it. And then just taper a couple of them so it's quite different. So again, 50-50, one in the top. Split it and pull it down the sides. Just pull it back. Tie it in. Okay. So that's you. A couple of feathers. We'll put a couple of grizzle in. Just gives it an extra barn effect. So I'll pick two, not too long, but roughly the same length. So I'm going to tie these in. I don't strip them to the the quill. Well, the stem, it's the stem. I tie them in with the, all the fluff and feathers still on them because that way they tie in flat. If you take them to the stem and you try and tie it in, they've got a tendency to twist. So I just tie them in the whole thing in a water. The length you desire, trim them off, and that's. That's them in, they sit square every time. So give it a good tidy up. A bit of varnish again. Just let everyone soak in. So you've got a durable fly. And throw a little, a little whip finish in. It's a three turner. In case you put your thread or unravel and then bring your thread right to the eye of the hook. Okay, for the head, in this head, I'm going to be using Mega Laser Dub. It's a Deer Creek Pro, well, Deer Creek Seller. It's Sculpin Wheel when added flash. I th when, you, when you tie it in, reverse tie it, it makes a nice broad head. You can see in this one, nice wide head, so it swims, funny, it swims every direction, or different direction every time you pull it, makes it look like an injured fish. It also, with the, with the wool head, it's not like adding weight, weight the fly will dive really fast. When you use like a laser dub head or a wool head, it doesn't add weight 
as such, but it absorbs water and it makes it dive, but slowly. So you're getting weight, but without adding weight, if you know what I mean. So for this stuff it comes, I've split what I'm wanting, I've split it, so I've got the desired amount I want for the top of the fly. And you line it up a wee bit longer you want. So I want it to end, I've got it a wee bit longer than the hook literally. I want it to end up the same length as the hook. So, one bit. And you've got the underside, the same length. And you've got, I can always take an extra bit. I'll show you this extra bit for in a minute. So, turn your, your face upside down. And tie in your bottom chunk underneath up right hard up against the eye then your vice back up take your top bit which is quite wide on top now I just roll it around the sides a wee bit okay catch it in just check that you haven't come too far forward or in this case I've not come far enough forward the yeah. So that's you got your top and bottom in. But this bit here, what I've got this for is I'm going to half it and I'm just going to tie it in on the sides just to fill the gap a wee bit. It's just where your eyes sit. So I've got one on the side there, one on this side. And then bind a decent bit down. I don't want to. I don't want to tie it all down. What this bulb here? I want this bump because when I fold this back, it's going to sit against it, and it'll hold its shape even when it's wet. So just go in there with a wet finish. Four turn. Don't catch anything down. Four turn wet finish. Tie it off. Bit of super glue, for durability. Let it soak right in there. Now, for your when you're doing this, what I do is I bring my top bit and I fan it out. I take my bottom bit and I split it in half so it goes round the hook, and then I fold over and back. Okay. And even though it looks horrendous just now. Sort of out. If you're a wee bit cool close to the eye, fugly packer, just push it all back a wee bit. And then before I even before I even comb it out, diamond fine, UV resin. I just put a bit round here, and all this will do it, it just secures it, it finishes it off. And it also st stops the laser dub coming back forward. And as you can see, how UV this red is. Absolutely phenomenal for the head of a fly. White and red is a famous colour for pike anyway. So, right, cool. You start combing it, just start the tips. Just start blending. Just work your way around slowly. You will blend it in. Just tease it out. Just taper. Pretty much all I'm doing is tapering the points. I'm not wanting to take a lot off. I'm just tapering the points of the laser dub. So just fold everything back. Nice blended head. Smooths it out. And that will take out the vice and show you. That will hold that shape in the water. And they'll dive slow, they swim. Awesome. So that's you, that's all you need. I just take a couple of the straggly bits all broken. 
Next, the next thing is eyes. Flies like eyes. I think it. I think when you stick a set of eyes on, it makes a strike point as well. So, it's one of the best eyes in the market. Deer Freak eyes. These are big. 14, 16 and 18 mils. I like an oversized eye. Just, I think they look cool, to be honest. So on these, I'm going to use 14 mils. Pretty cool. So, and how I attach them on is, if I can find my glue, I'm using this stuff. Loctite. It's a, a gel glue. It seems to be waterproof. I've never had an eye fall off yet, so we're doing not bad. So I would take them, I just put a turn the fly on the side and I put a big dab of glue. And then I quickly just overturn it and drop it where I want. And what I want is I don't want to squash the head, but I'll let the glue soak right in. So it's got a great hood of the fly. This stuff only takes a couple of minutes to dry and that's it solid. So again, do your thing. Let's get it sitting where you want it. Make sure there's no excess in there. And just just make sure you've got you've got a wee bit of wiggle room here until it dries, until it sets. There you go. That is my articulated pike fly. It's lightweight. I fish with nine weights, so you cast these no problem. That one there is probably 11 inch. There's no materials in it. They swim awesome in the water. And I've had numerous double figure pike on them over the last few years. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Tune in for the next one. Thank you very much. See you later.